Get the bad king walker. What's up, LFG fam? Welcome back to another video on the channel. And we've been talking about this for a minute. Uh, this is our first ever One Piece chapter review, chapter 1103 or 1103, uh, titled I'm Sorry, Father. Uh, we all read this a couple days ago within the past couple days, so we are excited to get up here. Our first One Piece content coming to you guys, so let us know if you guys enjoy it. Drop us a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, man. We'd appreciate it if you do all that stuff. But uh, yeah, so we're going to get right into it. Let's let's go through the chapter. Let's give our breakdowns. Let's give our thoughts, maybe some future things that are going to be coming up. Let's let's go through it. Uh, real quick, coming off the last chapter, because I know this is our first one coming off the last chapter. We saw shit. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. It did get me. It got me some tears out of me at the end when he said I'm a uh, happy 10th birthday. And then damn, yeah, that got me. So yeah, coming off of that chapter, going so, yeah, yeah. Just, that shit. Justin's hating ass because I saw a TikTok and it basically pointed out that at the beginning of the year, the first chapter that dropped was when she first stepped up to the the memories. Oh, yeah. And obviously, the end of the year was a chapter when she gets the memories. So it's like, come on, bro. Like, that's amazing. <laughs> that's crazy. But here comes Justin. That's not that crazy. Like, stop hating, bro. That <laughs> shit was hard. Nobody's doing that. I'll I, I, I get in those allegations later. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that's where we came off of. We obviously got to see all Akuma's life and do all that in the past couple chapters. Uh, so we're we're finally... Back to the Straw Hats. If I'm not mistaken, this has been a minute since we've seen the Straw Hats, since we've seen the Ahead and stuff. Uh, yeah. So we're we're finally back in this chapter, and it opens up with Bonnie coming out of the room where where uh, Kuma has like his paw print, you know, memories and shit like that. So she went and came out of that and experienced everything that he did. Uh, and right away she sees uh, a uh, Vega Punk, right? And she's telling him, you know what? Uh, I just came out. I'm I'm, I'm so and then oh hold on, I'm I'm scattered. I'm scattered. He he, called, he tells her, "I'm sorry, I broken the promise because he wasn't meant. She wasn't meant to see that, right? Like Kuma was like, don't show this to anybody. This is, you know, this. I don't want her to ever know this. And so she comes out and like, yeah, I broke the promise that that she uh, that he wanted for me and stuff like that. So I, I couldn't do it. Sorry. And he just, she just what I thought was very special for this for this moment is when she just goes and runs into his arms and she turns into a little kid and she's just hugging him. Uh, that was that was pretty cool. Uh, she just like." went back to her younger self so that 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 was really cool to see uh then we were continuing on in the chapter and he gives her a gift that kuma had entrusted to him to give to her and it turns out that it's a sapphire necklace and it resembles the sun uh so i thought that was pretty cool uh she obviously got teary-eyed and something she'll always cherish and Notice that it was Sapphire. What do you guys think about it being Sapphire? Like, this was the disease that killed her mom. This is the disease that she ended up having. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing mixed things, like, on, on it being Sapphire. Uh, like, damn, it's kind of, like, messed up that it's the disease, but it's also, like, symbolic. Yeah, what what do you guys stand on I it? think the symbolism is what's important here. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that's the biggest thing about it. Yeah, because yeah, I think she's full-on embraced it at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's the, the with the the earring or, or the the jewelry that she has on her cheek to resemble that. Yeah. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so then we were, we're going further on and she, he's just telling her what, what happened and, and you know what, the straw hats are here and a lot's happened since you've been in the room. Uh, so let's, let's go. I'll catch you up later. Let's go They're They're waiting. We need to meet, meet them. So let's, let's just go. Uh, so then she's like, okay, well, what, what's going on? I, I'm sorry, Bonnie, but I don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. So he's pretty much just telling her, let's go. Uh, let's get out of here. Cut fast forward to like present time, and this motherfucker Saturn's just got her in a chokehold, just like squeezing the life out of her, which is insane. Another thing I want to talk about real quick too is these Marines around him. It's rare enough to see Saturn, right? Like it's rare enough that you see these motherfuckers. I can imagine seeing this motherfucker in like this spider demon form and shit, seeing him for the first time. Like, what the hell is going on? And it seems like, at least in the initial moment, nobody's really talking about that as far as the Marines are just kind of focusing on what the job has to be done. But me personally, that shit is kind of nuts. Like, you don't see them, and then you see him transform. Like, well, what the hell is going on? So I thought that was kind of crazy. I think in the perspective of Marines, it's like, they, to be honest, they probably see the most crazy shit. But obviously, they can't say or act, react yeah. on any of it. They have to just listen to orders, or they're probably getting dealt with. They know that. So they're yeah. just put in a position that's messed up. So, yeah, I thought that was, that was insane. Uh, so while he's doing all of this, 
We don't know exactly what it is, but everybody else is frozen. The Straw Hats are frozen. The Vegapunks are frozen. Like everybody around them is just frozen. They can't move. Uh, so I, I don't. Do you guys have any theory? I mean, I don't know what's going on with that. Obviously, maybe it's his abilities, or even if he no, has yeah, Devil for Fruits, sure, or for sure. I don't know it what the hell it is. I, I mean, I'm not sure if it's hockey related. It has to be Devil Fruit related, in my opinion, because it, it, it's everybody. You Except think you for, think it, what they have is devil fruits? Is, do you guys think that's what that is, or do you think it's something completely different? Absolutely. Uh, he has the fruits? he has the um the awakening the awakening smoke around him. That has to be devil yeah. Fruit. I do yeah okay. Has to that's be that's a, that's a fair point for sure. Uh, so while she, while he's holding Bonnie, he's telling her that you know what your father's dead. Um, so we we find out later on in this chapter some of her abilities and shit like that, which is kind of mm-hmm. crazy and maybe a little bit uh, convoluted and in, in, in a mystery still on how exactly everything works. At least to me, maybe you guys got a little bit more of an understanding, but it's kind of weird. Uh, so then we see sin tomorrow, like cha- wrapped up and they got her in chains. Uh, then you see what I thought was very interesting to uh, Kizaru is finally like waking up after his fight w- with uh, Luffy and he's just on the floor and he's kind of noticing what's going on. And he calls sin tomorrow, sin tomorrow coon. Kind of like a, I guess, a nickname or whatever, you know, like that show of affection. Because as we know, they grew up and he spent a lot of time with them and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool to see. Uh, then we get a shot of Dragon and what he's thinking and, and talking about Kuma. Maybe you know, what where do you think he he went? Uh, Ivankov, he's talking to Ivankov. Where do you think he went? What do you think he's doing? And and Ivankov's just like, well, if I was him, I'd go to Marie Joie. And obviously he went to Marie Joie, but. I don't. He didn't spend too much time there, as far as like of his own free will, anyways. Uh, and what I thought was interesting about this shot, he, uh, Dragon goes, "So Kuma was wrong after all." What What did you guys take from that, or, or what do you think he meant by that? I'm, I'm I'm a little confused on that part. So Kuma was wrong after all. Do you guys Did you guys gather anything? I, I'm like, what the hell? So I don't I don't know I don't know uh, I I am seeing things that like hey this dude might be on the way over here to Egghead like we might actually see some shit from from Dragon I like, think so you don't think, think he's on the way I think it's too dangerous for him, for him like in, in, in what like the Revolutionary Army is like doing their plans and stuff he's too dangerous to do something wild like that obviously Kuma is still a regu- revolutionary but they know he's he's that's not him like so like I don't think they make a move on that. We we need to we need to see some cool I mean some cool with some dragon shit. That's him and Shanks, man, two of the the scariest motherfuckers in this universe, and we haven't seen much on. So it's kind of crazy. So I mean, oh, shit. Hopefully we can see some things. But wrong some people, like wrong, I said, have theorized man. that he might be coming to Egghead. Uh, so we'll nah, see if that man. turns out or not. Uh, let me. So we continue in the story, and um. You, you see you see bonnie right like sh- we've seen these abilities uh in the past like uh, kind of her powers and she kind of resembles luffy's abilities and she's turning her her body into rubber her fist into rubber almost and she tries to do that here with saturn and uh, right as she goes in for the punch it kind of just like fizzles out and uh it doesn't work so she's like a- astonished from it uh, as to why it didn't work or what's going on she's confused uh why am i becoming weak again uh, she mentioned, or, or Saturn, I should say, mentioned uh, much like Nika. So uh, she obviously knows about Nika from Kuma because that was just like the tale and the the, the religion almost, if you want to call it that, that they followed. Uh, so he was like, well, of course you're his daughter, right? You 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 are Kuma's daughter because you know about Nika. It makes sense. Um, so then we start getting some interesting dialogue here between uh, Saturn and uh, Bonnie and talking about the the nika powers and stuff like that and giving her more explanation as to what what was going to happen now as this is going on we see luffy on the floor asking for food give me food give me food i'm hungry and uh he's 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 doing his old dialogue monologue with bonnie or whatever and you see in the next shot he's just eating somebody passed this man food he, as he's doing this, he notices, he's like, hey, yo, what the hell? Who, who gave Luffy food? Which one of y'all did this shit to him? Like, get him tied up, put him put him in the, the stone, what is it called? The uh, the sea stone cuffs and stuff. Yeah, so, uh-huh. yeah, so <laughs> so they're trying to do all of that. Um, let's talk about that real quick. Do you guys have any theories on who possibly gave him food? I, I'm, I'm, I'm heavy on it, uh, Kizaru. Heavy on it. Oh? Okay, that's where I'm at too. That's where I'm at. And that's what I was noticing. A lot of people said the same thing too. 
We gotta um, understand nobody else can move besides the select few. And unless somebody magically showed up, which they would have made their presence known or they would have been spotted, who else could it be? Let's keep it a stack. He's yeah. there. He knows what needs to be done. Obviously, we don't know why, but come on. Yeah, and from man. and from panel to panel, like just the speed of which Luffy got food. It's just kind of like it's, from 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 the fact that he was kind of the one that was moving a little bit, and the fact that he's fast as fuck. Like it's just yeah. I don't know. It's, that's that's crazy though. That is crazy. That would be that'd be a crazy switch up because obviously every time we see Kizaru, he's like, ah, "This is my job. I got to do the job. I'm just giving orders. I'm following orders and shit." So for him, and it would make sense that it would be he would do that because obviously, as we saw in previous chapters, he grew up with Sentomaru. He grew up with with Vega Punk and stuff like that. So it, they they mean something to him. Um, I think that'd be pretty cool. I think it would be fucking crazy if it was him. Another thing people were saying is like, how are they going to get away now that he's here? Uh, obviously, he moves at the speed of light, so it's going to be hard to fucking run from him. Uh, Kuma's here now, though. Obviously, and we'll get to that too. Spoilers for future stuff, but Kuma might be here. And that might be another way. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I fully believe it is is it is Kizaru too. So that'd be nuts to see the switch up on that happen. Um, so then get he gets back to the conversation with Bonnie, and this is where we get the the abilities uh, more or less, where we find out that. They extracted the devil fruit ability from the fruit. She didn't eat it in the normal sense, right? He, he, a juice, I guess, if you want to call it a juice, or I don't know how he fed it to her as a baby, but they extracted it from the fruit, gave it to her, and it was success. Uh, and the fruit was, was he, he goes on to say the fruit, the fruit was rendered useless pretty much, just like any other buddy, anybody else eating the fruit after that first bite. It's just a fruit after that. Um, that's kind of nuts. I don't know. And maybe it's not so much. Like, maybe it's just the way the fruits work, right? But we get a little bit more on that. What did you guys think about that? Like, her having a different way of consuming the fruit. I, I think... I, I don't know if it's out of left field for me. It's not, because One Piece is a story with a lot of mysteries. And we don't even fully comprehend what the devil fruits are. So, a different way of consuming them can literally mean who knows what. Because, yeah. again, we don't, we don't know why Blackbeard can, can, can have multiple fruits. We don't know. We were told you can't. But again, we're I like think of it like in the perspective. We're we're humans and this is something that's out of our world. So how are we to understand it that easily? There has to be some other things we don't understand. And clearly, well what they did to her is something else, and we're about to learn it. Yeah. So continuing on Oh, go ahead, Jed. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say because usually um you know, I I kinda push back against things like that but Cody's 100% right when it comes to the fruits like there was a a, a a set of of basic borderline rules that were introduced with the fruits at the beginning of one piece and since, since then and to where we are now Oda has strategically put in at different parts of the story um different times where what was said in the beginning is not necessarily the case um and so i agree that it's not out of left field we don't have a grasp on truly what all that devil fruits can do and to be frank what they are like we truly don't know yeah. um and so we kind of just have to go along with what's being told in the story right now and as we keep going just because, I mean, like 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 I said, we don't fucking know. Um, but juicing the fruits, <laughs> yeah. like if, if if that's what that shit is, the possibilities are in. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that that's crazy. That's I want to I want to say too, like if anything, what this is telling us, it is the government's fault because we know that they manipulate anything that they can, and probably devil fruits is the one thing they couldn't fully keep held. Because obviously when someone dies, it respawns somewhere randomly. So obviously they couldn't keep Devil Fruits a secret, but they could make people believe one thing about them. And that's probably how it went on. And who knows what Devil Fruits can do. Well, and then going back to having two abilities, because this motherfucker Blackbeard has two. And when and, and I forgot to mention this to you guys, because obviously I started reading the manga. It sounded like he was going to get try to get three with, uh, with what's his name? The frozen dude, uh, Aokiji. It sounded like he was going to try to get three Devil Fruits from him. Do you guys think he can get more abilities and things like that real quick? If he can get two, I believe he can get more. Maybe, 
yeah, I mean, that goes to the whole theory of maybe he has three personalities with his three, uh, mm-hmm. with his uh, Jolly Roger and shit like that. That'd be kind of crazy. But if, because we still don't know what he did under that, that curtain, man. Nobody with like, knows. what, how did he do it? The people are speculating maybe he, you know, now that we know this, maybe he like ate his heart, ate some flesh, drank his blood, did some shit. But he didn't that. have no holes, no nothing. Yeah, that's true. That yeah, is gotta, true. We got to remember. The darkness he, fruit. He's been giving out fruits to other people. We don't. The darkness fruit could be because it's canceling double fruits. Yeah. It I think it's interesting, be- like how, like the strategic way that he says no to a fruit that obviously he's come into contact with. He's beat that person, and he obviously could have took their fruit for himself if he wanted it, but he didn't. And mm-hmm. so, going from you know he has his darkness fruit. To getting fucking white beards fruit, and then the next one you want is Alkiji. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So he does. He just doesn't want any fucking fruit. Yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. He, I mean, he's had a plan from the beginning. He we has a he's plan. Had a plan. For he's sure. had a plan of what he wants to do and how he wants to go about doing it. Mm-hmm. So yeah, so that we'll we'll see. Hopefully in the future how that pans out. But going back to the shot, then you start. He starts talking about her abilities, and he specifically says this user is able to transform however they want regarding the foreseeable future. Now, this is where things kind of get murky or, or a little convoluted. I'm not too sure. But he says, however, its abilities are severely decreased when one's knowledge about the future differs from reality. Uh, I how do you? I don't. I don't. What? Like, damn. How the fuck? So if she is pretty much an imagination fruit, right? Like. If she can imagine it, she can do it, I think, is what, what it is, right? But if if it starts coming down to where concrete things are happening, and she's just going to lose those abilities. Um, essentially, she might have one of the craziest devil fruits that we know of if she could just do whatever her imagination wants, as we know with, with Nika and all of that pretty much being the same thing as far as however he wants to fight, or however he wants to do, he could do it. Hers might be the same way, and I don't know what... Well, but we got to get more about this because this is kind of nuts. Yeah, to, to um to add on to that because there's obviously like this isn't official, so there's other transcripts for it. So from what I see on mine, it says its ability can transform into a state that matches any future perceived to be possible. So that's adding on to that. That okay? It could be anything, whatever yeah. she wants it to. Whatever, be. yeah, whatever she wants it to be is kind of nuts. So yeah, we we definitely got to go more into that. Um. Then as this is happening, we get a shot of, of this this person flying from the air, and it turns out to be Kuma, and he is on his way, bro, to Egghead, which is insane. How is he even doing this? He's supposed to have no humanity left. He's just a cyborg, just a bot, follow orders, but we see him coming down. Uh, you start seeing the soldiers, the Marines being like, something's here, something's coming out. Oh, it's it's a, it's a pacifist. Uh, no, wait a minute. It's not a pacifist. You can see the paw on his on his uh, hand and stuff. So that was pretty crazy to see. Uh, but going on, we still. I think he lands right. If he lands, everybody's looking over at the big disruption on what's going on with that. Uh, then you see Bonnie just kind of starting to break down and and really give up. I guess is is, is what she's coming to. Like maybe I'm better off as as just dead. Uh, this has just been a whole heartache for for myself for my father. I've just been a burden and stuff like that. Uh, so that was, she's just going through these emotions, uh, as he's doing all of this, we're still getting Saturn monologuing his, his whole villainous plan that he's been doing and stuff like that. Uh, come to find out that he's the reason that, you know, the Sapphire disease is, was in his mom and it transferred down to, to Bonnie, if I got that correct. Um, then you, you see Vegapunk being like, what, you're the reason you you did all these experience, uh, experiments, Saturn, you, you were toying with the Kuma's family and stuff like that. Like, damn, what's your, what's, what's the point of that? And you pretty much just, he's a God, man. He's like, what, what do I care? You know, they're insects to me. Like, I, what, what am I supposed to do? Cry for them and stuff. So I thought that was kind of crazy. And it shows you the level of thinking that these guys are, are, are on. Cause like they really don't give a fuck about anybody unless you're, you're emu or one of them. You're, you're just an insect to them. Uh, so I thought that was kind of crazy. Uh, then you continue to see Kuma just kind of coming through, through Egghead Island and the, the Marines are all just unloading on them, unloading all the, the ammunition, fire, cannon fire. Everything's just going off on them. Just like, just destroy them, stop them by any means. Uh, and he's just kind of powering through shit, man. Like shit, none of this shit's kind of affecting him. You see him kind of get shot and, He's just still going, so I thought that was insane to see. Uh, then this is you get the next panel shot of her crying, and it'd be better off if I just died. Uh, and right at that moment, uh, you you kind of see Kuma coming up, 
Like he sees her, and right as as Saturn's about to kill her, throws her to the ground, about to stab her with the lake. Crazy, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's insane, insane. Kuma just comes in like a, like a like a father that he is, bro, and protecting his daughter that he's been doing this entire time in his entire existence, and just takes that shot and just holding her. Then you, she yells, "Father!" And you kind of just see the face, like he's kind of torn up. You can see the cyborg guy, like have, as we've seen before. And he turns around, grabs this man's spider leg, and winds up for one of the craziest shit. What we hope to see is one of the craziest punches that we Oda to see. Has yeah, to let crazy. that punch connect. Bro, he has to. That There's no, bro. It, it I'm gonna be, be sick if that shit too. doesn't connect. I swear to it, God, it has to, bro. It has to. Uh, uh, I, I was watching something earlier, and they're calling it the the Papa uh, punch or some shit like that. But the the funny thing was Papa, like that's a Papa, that's a Papa punch coming for you. Guys. So I thought that was hilarious. But yeah, this this is where the chapter ends, and you see Saturn's eyes just completely wide open because that motherfucker's always chill for the most part. <laughs> His eyes open wide open. And uh, yeah, the next chapter is gonna be kind of crazy. We'll see what happens with that punch. But y'all like, I need a, I need a Luffy celestial dragon type punch. That's dude. what I'm saying. Ooh. Like, y'all gotta understand. This man Kuma literally always attacks with a hand open. This man fisted no home, <laughs> <laughs> but yo, like that was crazy, bro. Like that's like Sanji punching somebody. You're not gonna Damn. see it. Like that is crazy. That that's how like nuts. that's how much it meant to him to see that happen, bro. Kuma. <sighs> so Vegapunk, he had to like defy orders, right? Like that that that's to be what this is. That that's what people are speculating. You maybe. would think, but I don't know. Science isn't perfect. He probably messed up and and then see You think he messed Vegapunk? up? Yeah, I don't yeah. think Vegapunk. I don't think he I messed mean up. Yeah. Vegapunk has a heart. We clearly know that. So maybe he he That's he, what I'm saying. And the way the way he was begging the old boy, like yeah. Like about Bonnie, like you know, just pleading to him, like, come on, like you don't got to do this. Like, I just, I just think he put a fucking uh, a fail switch in there. Man. You don't, I mean, shit. It, you don't think he could have just broke this shit of his own volition? Like, that's what I'm hey, saying. Hey, Something this is my like daughter Puma? is the whole. Yeah, this is my daughter. I, I mean, I don't know how how he would know he she's at Egghead or how he got all that information to just go straight to Egghead, but. Shit, maybe he broke it himself. I don't know. We'll find out hopefully in the next chapter, but every kind of nuts. Or 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 he programmed him that if she's ever about to die to come and save her life. Possibly. Yeah, that's a good theory. That's a good theory. Spoilers and not spoilers, I don't know. Maybe it's a theory at this point. We'll see. Jet brought us something. If you guys don't want to know, appreciate you guys. Uh but if you guys do we're going to get into it right now. We've been getting more of Bonnie. We've been getting more of, of her and her father's relationship, obviously. So this, this theory, maybe I'm going to call it a theory because I think that's what it is, but it's looking like it's going to come true in my eyes. I don't know. We'll see where you guys are at. Uh, Bonnie is going to be that 10th member of the Straw Hats. What do you think? What do you guys think? We'll see it. I we'll won't see it. You don't see it? I don't see it anymore. Nah. Did you think you don't know? I okay, you need to get like, into that because I was finna go, but I didn't. I didn't expect you to say that. Yeah, I didn't expect yeah. that. Yeah, because at first, like, yeah, like it seemed like she would like this is like the perfect member, but like as I'm seeing it, this is just more of like it feels like this is the end of her story. Like she finally got the what's the word I'm looking for? Like she sees Kuma again. Obviously, this is if it. Hopefully, he has his mind intact and she gets a conversation or something. But I feel like after this situation, she's basically like fulfilled like she doesn't need nothing else what's the point of continue well then again she could just be like okay if he's nika i want to help him fix the world so that kind of let me go back at first i was feeling that way but i just realized so yeah that's that's where i was at that's where i was at i think she's gonna join the crew because obviously this is the religion that a lot of people a lot of slaves have have clinged to and stuff like that and nika and he's the the liberator and stuff like that so once and and actually i didn't mention this but in the chapter uh, you see Saturn, and he's like, "Oh, you didn't make the connection between mm-hmm, between mm-hmm. Nika and Luffy yet." Okay, once she makes that connection and realizes, that, "Oh shit, this is this is Nika, and he has the abilities of, of the Sun God, but my father," I see her joining the crew, and just like like Codes mentioned, like let's let's go liberate some people, let's go fulfill your dreams, and let's help people along the way. I think she's the perfect she's the perfect uh, 
uh, next crewmate. I will say they do need another female, and they have so many options down the road. Like, uh, as far as me, I like when when it was first because I obviously I heard about that spoiler. What is it going on? Two weeks now. That was ago. yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, I read eleven oh two obviously because we're here, and just like seeing like the connections that Oda wove in together of 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 Nika and Luffy and Bonnie, like I, I'm just there now. Like I, I I'm not against it. Like I, I I'm fucking there. Like I, I I like I didn't care about Bonnie before any of that shit. Like why would you? Because it was say like why? Yeah, but yeah. Oh, Oda's a fucking god, bro. Like he he <laughs> he, he did it. Like I I give a fuck about. Bonnie. Like if she dies right here, like Cody's. Well, not he, he didn't say she dies, yeah. but if she were to die, like that shit would crush me. I ain't gonna mm. lie, because to me, and I've been saying it as a joke, but cool is top five, bro. That guy, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's top five to me he is that guy um but it, it just sucks because as far as like a 10th member goes and, and it always goes back to that debate of how you yeah. interpret what luffy said back then about 10 members if he's including himself or if, if he's counting the 10 people however you want to look at it but there was just people along the way and i said this before but there was people along the way that i i really wanted to join the crew like fucking carrot um mm-hmm. What's Vivi? Uh, no, you don't. Vivi. Uh, um, oh, the, the chick from Wano, Kaido's, fuck. Kaido's. Yeah, I'm fucking drawing a blank. What's her name, Cody? I'm drawing a fucking blank. Uh, what the fuck? I love her too. Tough. Yeah, we all do. Um, Yamato. 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 Good shit. How did Yamato. we miss that, bro? What? I don't know. <laughs> Egg has been fucking phenomenal. Wano. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> You know, it's just there's people along the way that I wanted to to, to join the crew, um, and so that kind of hurts. But Bonnie, like, just the journey that we've been on him through that backstory, like, I'm I'm just there. Um, Ooh, so. one thing I want to add on to this: she now has Kuma's memories, and I yes. feel like that builds her as a person. She's basically going to be Kuma now, and then Kuma's a revolutionary, obviously, but she still has that like. She's like the I want to truly do it. Like obviously Kuma was okay with becoming a slave, but that's to help the greater good. But she's actually saying fuck that. I'm gonna go and actually like liberate how how he yeah. used to do in his life. Like that's what she's gonna do on the ship. You you said that right, and it just clicked. Do we see her joining Dragon? What if Dragon shows up? Like I mentioned, what if Dragon shows up and now she has her pick? Right? You want to go with Nika? You want to go with, do your dad's path and go with Dragon and be a revolutionary? What? Damn! What do we think? Do you guys think I'm? That's, that's kind of nuts. I, I'd rather her join the Straw Hats. I'd rather her yeah, join the Straw yeah, Hats yeah, yeah. And, and do what she's got to do over there. I but, think it makes more sense for her to join Nika. Yeah, like yeah, it does. It does. Just because like they both make Nika. sense, but just, yeah, you know, like joining your dad's like. Like following your dad's footsteps, like that that that's cool, but the the connection that that's been like like you've been told through through your dad about Nika. So like kind of carving your own path, but also staying that course that your dad like told you about. I just I just think it makes more sense. And because yeah. she she knows from him from his memories that he saved Luffy. So she yeah. knows like all of that yeah. just besides the fact that he's Nika. With that that knowledge of Nika, that's gonna be enough. Where she's like, "I'm on board." Yeah, she, she's she's gonna be for there for that ride because she knew from her dad's memories that he's gonna change the world. So she's gonna be a part of that. I'm convinced. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, hopefully that that comes to fruition and we get to see that happen. Because her being the tenth uh, straw hat would be fucking phenomenal. Uh, like like Jet mentioned, it's it's so crazy for him to switch it up like that. Because the, all these conversations we had before that, like, nah, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see who gives a fuck. Who gives a fuck? But Oda being Oda, man, gave probably, and we had a debate. Well, not a debate. We had a, what was it, like a ranking, right? When we did the top five or whatever it was of, of most saddest stories, backstories and stuff like that. You could throw that in there, and this could probably be a, a great debate with, with throwing Kuma's backstory in there. Because that shit was, was phenomenal. It, yeah, that was phenomenal. The things that he he's done for. He gave his life. He gave yeah. his life. We yeah. obviously weren't doing chapter reviews, you know, obviously a week ago or whenever. But uh, 1102 or 1101, where he was just going back in time through the Straw Hat's journey, and you just see like at different points in time 
um, different people's perspectives, like like Kuma and shit. And then and you see like when Zoro took Luffy's pain, and you're just seeing different panels like that. You're just like, God mm. damn, bro! Like this this dude went to know. go meet Luffy, bro, before he set on his journey, which was crazy to me. That was insane. You didn't get to actually meet him, obviously, but he saw him and got to see what he was about. So that was that was pretty cool, man. Yeah. So any any other final thoughts, boys, before we head out? Oda's the goat, man. Oda is the goat. Egghead top five. Ooh. Egghead you know, top five. They, uh, top five this early before I've seen how it wraps up. D? Okay. Well, <laughs> let us know you guys' thoughts on that. Make sure you guys comment, uh, subscribe, like. Do, do you do all that good stuff? We appreciate you guys. This is our first chapter review. So make sure you guys stay tuned for, for many more. We'll see how often we we do these or or how we're going to want to do them. But and I want to say, you, go real ahead. quick, I, I don't mean to. I don't You're mean good. to stop you, but I just want to say we are not fucking pros and you know what I'm saying? There are other people that you can go watch for a more in-depth breakdown. We are just really big fans of One Piece, so if you hear something that's misinformation, we're just you know, we're giving you the chapter how we absorbed it. Yeah, <laughs> so you yeah, can comment sure. down below sure. what, it, what it really is or whatever. Let's have a discussion. Let's have it. Let us know. Yeah, hey, yeah, now nah, y'all, y'all fucked yeah. up right there. My bad. But hey, here it is. Let us know. Like I said, it's the first one. Hopefully, we'll clean it up and we'll we'll, we'll do a little bit better. But even by then, man, we're 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 fans of One Piece. That's that's all it is. We're just fans of One Piece and and are thoroughly enjoying this. And we're along for the ride, and we can't wait. But in the meantime, we appreciate you guys watching this video, and make sure you keep it locked to LFG, where we got you covered in anything and everything in pop culture. And we'll see you on the next one. Peace. Cheers.